The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. This episode of Sasquatch Mountain Man is presented by Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you. Born of the mountains, blood of the Indian. He lives by the way he hunts. He rekindles the fires of the past and roams in buckskin. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. Rivers, the first highways through the continent, transporting mountain men and their goods. Laramie Miller plies the first trade, beaver, America's first industrial product. The likes of John Jacob Astor and William Henry Ashley, the first tycoons, the free trappers, the first entrepreneurs. 500 years ago, 200 million beaver were damming up the rivers all over. Today, there are at least 15 million of them little critters. Their how and why, Laramie can still live the free trapper's life. They say the world don't need trappers no more. Well, Laramie Miller's content to let them go on saying whatever they like. For Laramie, there's a far horizon for the way he lives. The horizon of the North Star in Alaska. You know, it's always amazing to me how wild this country really is. I mean, there's not a house for miles. I love it, I think I found me a second home. You know me, I'm from the Rockies. But this country ain't no joke. You bring me up here to Alaska, it's a whole different story. This country is a lot different than the Rocky Mountains. You know, it's even more unforgiving. The country is so big. You better know what you're doing or you're probably gonna be carried out in a body bag if you ever get found. <laughs> It ain't idle chatter when Laramie talks about the dangers of the last frontier. It's a get tough or die out here. A freak accident, and Laramie's on his way to the hospital and then back to home. Lucky it wasn't worse, and even luckier considering the timing. But I'm fortunate I did that. Because of that, that got me out of the woods. I was close to civilization. And six days later, my appendix ruptured. I think somebody is looking out for me. Looking out for him. Not least so he can find his way back to Alaska. There's a nice little stream and some sloughs going all the way down through here. So I'm just going to walk down through and try to find a couple of good spots to set some conner bear traps and We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I can catch some beaver. Busy as a beaver. Not only can a beaver cut down a whole grove of trees in days, but it can make a tree fall in the exact direction it wants, and usually toward the water. There's a beaver right there on the ice. I do believe this is a good spot. <laughs> if you look, you got, there's a beaver lodge over there. You can see they've cleaned this out pretty good, all the little poplar trees and birch trees. They got this dam built right along this old two track. This would be a good place to set a few traps. I'm just a little scared on how thick that ice is. I'm gonna go over and check out the lodge and see. See, if you look, it's perfect. You can see exactly where the beavers are moving around under the ice because you got a lot of air bubbles. This ice is pretty thin, but 
I don't know, I think, I think we can make it work. A beaver can build a lodge 16 feet high and 40 feet wide with long teeth that grow throughout its entire life. So I'm gonna show you right here how to do an underwater set for beaver. You can do it, it the best time to do it is with the ice. Otherwise, it's a pain in the butt because you're gonna have to wait out there and everything else. But first thing you do, I've got a 330 Conor Bear right here. Go ahead and set your trap. So you got your trap set. There's your trigger. Like I've always said, you always want to make sure your trigger is on the side that you think that beaver's coming from. So we got the lodge right here. That beaver's going to be coming out of the lodge and swimming. You can see the bubbles where he's been swimming. So I want to set the trigger on this side. And I'm gonna do it different than the way I've done it ever before. So you can see I got a couple logs here in front of me. This right here, I'm gonna to use to stick all the way down there so it sticks on the bottom. And you wanna tap it in a little bit so it doesn't go anywhere. So it's gonna be all the way down below the ice. You wanna stick it right through your little eyes right here. So you just want that up off the ground, not too far, you know, maybe six, eight inches off the bottom. Because then beavers are gonna come out from below and they're gonna swim along the bottom for a little while before they get up below the ice. And so as you can tell, you want it to sit just like that. This country is so harsh, it makes me wonder, were there mountain men out here we just don't know about or stories that I haven't heard? Sign up for the Bass Pro Shops Outdoor Channel, Mountain Man Sweepstakes. Log on to BassPro.com forward slash Mountain Man Sweeps and enter to win a $5,000 shopping spree. Fill up your possibles bag with all the essential hunting gear. Sign up, Bass Pro Shops Mountain Man Sweepstakes. That's BassPro.com forward slash Mountain Man Sweeps. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Alaska. For Laramie Miller, it ain't the last frontier, but the new one. A new frontier for trapping beaver. And beavers are going to come out from below and they're going to swim along the bottom for a little while. And so as you can tell, you want it to sit just like that. And so I'm going to tighten these down however I want it. This wire right here comes up to the top. This other log is going to go along the top of the ice. And that's to keep this from, say the beaver goes in there and gets something caught and he's still alive and he flops around. Well, you don't want this coming and going underneath the ice. So that's what this log is for, to keep your trap in the same spot. I've already got my hole here. It's already chopped out. It hasn't really froze over. I'm gonna have to be real careful walking on this ice and moving around because it's pretty deep right there. <laughs> Before you put it down in the water, check your safeties. Make sure your safeties aren't on. Trapping didn't begin with the mountain men. It did not begin with the Indians. Trapping is as old as hunting itself, as old as finding food and hides. And Laramie's knowledge is as ancient as the first trappers. And there you go. So let's hope that beaver comes swimming out, goes right through, and there you go. Trapping is worldwide and from before history, the mountain man's was a unique way of life. You, know, you wonder, you never hear stories about mountain men in Alaska. Inuits and you know some of the guys that live up here, and they live like the mountain men used to, kinda. But this country's so harsh that if you get stuck out here without shelter, you're probably not gonna make it through. It's built for a mountain man. It makes me wonder, 
you know, were there mountain men out here that we just don't know about or there stories that I haven't heard? Alaska had few mountain men on horseback, but there were other trappers and explorers from different countries. You know, whenever I go a place, I like to look at the history. I'm here in Alaska doing some trapping, and Alaska was actually originally owned by Russia, and then we bought it from then and so on and so forth. But the reason the Russians were here is they were trapping sea otter. And it's kind of coincidence, I'm here trapping. That's the reason the Russians were here. Here's remnants of an old church. There's an old little village that these people still live like traditional Russia. You know, they still live old school and dress in their old ways. And I think it's really neat to look at the history. And it all started with trapping. Throughout Alaska, the old Russian names are still there. Baranov, Chichagov, Sitka, Kodiak. Well, I've got three traps right here, right outside the beaver lodge I'm gonna check. There's still some work in this area. You can see all the bubbles. The last thing I want to do is fall through this sucker. Nothing in that one. No luck. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, a nice little beaver. Can go from 40 degrees to negative 30 in a matter of hours. You gotta adapt to everything. Brought to you by the Ego Power Plus Lawnmower. Ego, power beyond belief. Brought to you by Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you. In Alaska, Laramie Miller sees if his trapping knowledge from the Rockies will apply here. This is different country from what he's used to with its own set of rules. Other cultures from other lands have left their mark, but beaver remain beaver wherever they're found. Oh, look at that. Oh. I'll take all this off so I can reset. There you go. Nice Alaskan beaver. You know, if you look right here, this is a perfect little lodge. You can look over and in the ice, you can see they've got all these sticks and brush and stuff piled up right here for a winter food source. You can see where all the bubbles are. The beavers are coming right out of the lodge right here, going over, feeding on their winter food source, coming back in. They must have some more over there because you can see, you can see where these beavers came out last night. If you look at all the grass and mud and whatnot, that's where they came out last night and they were feeding and messing around. It's pretty neat because I don't usually trap in the ice. Something different. You got to adapt to everything. You adapt your ways, but the mountain man heart stays the same. set your traps, ethics means checking them often. A swing and a miss. Looks good. Oh. There you go.
Look at that. I'm gonna reset this trap, go through, check the rest of them, take them back to the, the camp and get him skinned out. Maybe we can catch some more. As old and worldwide as trapping is, it's not always well liked by some people in the modern age. You know, people are always asking, well, why do we need to trap? We don't need to trap, that's primitive. Well, you look right here, you got this big beaver pond right here. You can see they've completely plugged up this culvert. Well, what's gonna eventually happen is it's gonna run over the top of this, it'll erode this little two track away, then they'll go down and they'll make another dam down there. This whole valley will eventually be all beaver dams. So it's taken away a bunch of ecosystem. They destroy so much property that if you don't manage them, there's gonna be houses flooded out, roadways flooded out, people's yards. They'll eat every tree around here. You won't have any trees left. I'm not saying you gotta trap every beaver. I don't want that. I want my kids to be able to trap beavers. But you have to manage the population. Well, beaver, they're just like the rest of nature today. We humans have way too big an impact to stand back and do nothing to aid the environment. It's an ethics thing. We go out, we hunt for substance. We've encroached on all their property. We owe it to them to manage their population. Because if we don't, they're gonna start dying of disease. They're gonna overtake everything. And there's not gonna be anything for any of us. It just drives me crazy when you get somebody that doesn't understand the big picture and says, we don't need trapping. Not only is trapping a way of life, it has to be done. That's a prime example of why. You know, beaver is actually really tasty. It's not gamey at all. Fry them up, oh boy. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. In Alaska, Laramie Miller feels as if he's found a new frontier home. Here, he's discovered untapped places to trap. It's a land to challenge you with its vastness and its harsh wonder. There's an edge and a bounty to it unlike any other place he's known. Well, as you can see right here in front of me, this is the catch from the last few days. Got some beavers and a couple muskrats. I'm gonna go ahead and skin them all out, get them taken care of, flesh the hides a little bit. The beaver meat I'm gonna keep because it's great for baiting bears, uh, any, any kind of animal you wanna bait. They love beaver meat. And if it gets to that point, I don't mind eating beaver meat myself. So beavers are pretty straightforward and simple to skin. You split them from the tail to the bottom of their jaw. You peel it all out. You cut around their legs, pull that out, and you're good to go. Flesh all the fat, nasty stuff off of it. Up here, I gotta get them back to my cabin, so I'm not gonna stretch them right here. I'll wait until I get back down there. I'll probably salt them good and freeze them. Be good to go. There's one down. Tell you what, these beaver hides are in perfect condition. You can look, if you take a look at some of this, I mean, you can see how, you know, thick and, it's early in the season, but, Compared to what we get down in Montana, up here, I mean, that's about prime season for us. Up here, they even get a little thicker because obviously it gets cold. You gotta be real careful with beaver hide because they're so thin that you can cut right through them really easy. Uh-oh. See how quick, easily I cut through that? Rookie mistake. You know, when you're doing baited sets for beaver, you take the caster, which is this little gland right down in here. I'll pull it out as soon as I get to that spot, but they'll secrete it on themselves and then they'll rub it all over and that, it helps waterproof their hide. 
It's some stinky, nasty stuff, though. <laughs> Luckily, as Lewis and Clark's right-hand cook said about buffalo intestine, the part that is not good to eat is not on the menu. You know, beaver is actually really tasty. It's got a little bit of grease to it, but uh, it's not gamey at all. You know, sometimes I'll take the tail and I'll boil it and make a stew broth out of it. But I really enjoy the backstrap. Fry them up, oh boy. You may not have to wander all the way up to Alaska to eat fresh beaver backstrap, but that might make it taste even better. Well, got those beaver skinned out. I gotta start thinking now what I can make out of them. When he fleshes and stretches these hides, he'll have for himself traditional clues. For many folks, they need look no farther than their backyard for their frontier. For others, the world is just too big and the pull of adventure too strong not to want to see what lies nearer the pole and west of the sunset.